it's Lo. Hi, I'm Haley. And, and we, we are Wrestling Wind Down. In this episode, we're covering all of the shows after Mania, including Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live, and NXT. So grab your glass of wine. We're going in for the three count. Raw and SmackDown after Mania are huge shows because usually you see a couple call-ups from NXT, you see some returns. I was pretty excited to see these matches for the week. Me too. I was excited to see what was going to happen, like what everyone thought of their matches after WrestleMania, what was the follow-up, and here we go, our top matches. Yes, so we kicked off Raw, we had Seth Rollins, a surprise appearance by The New Day, where the crowd just absolutely loved it, because Kofi Mania, of course. Mm -hmm. Big E is in a full split in the ring, I still can't get over that. I'm shocked. I I think everyone was shocked. I'm impressed, that was crazy. I mean, did you see Seth's face? Everyone had Seth's face, it was insane. So these two kind of talked it out, and then Kofi challenged Seth Rollins on his show to a winner-takes-all match because they were so inspired by Becky's performance the night before yeah. where she won the Raw and SmackDown championships. That was the main event, and that main event got interrupted. It did. So it ended up being a tag team match. Yes, and I know a lot of fans were kind of upset about that. They were excited to see what was going to happen between Seth and Kofi. A lot of people on Twitter thought that that was going to be Big E's heel turn, or they thought that Mm. someone from NXT was going to make their debut. Everyone's like, oh my god, like, is this the moment that Undisputed Era is coming? And honestly, I'm very happy that they didn't make their debut that night. I don't like how this night turned out with the bar coming in. The bar! (laughs) But, I mean, there were a lot of great moments throughout the night that kind of makes up for how it ended. Such as... The Undertaker returning. Oh, my God. Were you expecting that? I was not. Okay, Elias is never going to make it through his song, but this was not what (sighs) anyone was expecting. The Undertaker came out of nowhere. Haley does not like Elias. I'm not a fan. We talked about that on our first episode. But the WWE has to really have some type of vision for Elias for him to be interrupted at WrestleMania by John Cena and then the next night by The Undertaker. Two big names. Exactly. I must say, I was very shocked to see the condition that The Undertaker was in. Many people online were saying that he was in incredible shape, which he is. He's 54 years old. You know, he did a couple moves, and he looks impeccable. Do I think he should return full-time? That's another story. (laughs) I thought it was a great appearance by him. You know, we missed him on WrestleMania Sunday, so it was great to have him on Raw. Yeah, he had to make an appearance somewhere, and... Raw's the best place he could be, right? Then we also had Kurt Angle, who retired the night before. He made a cameo with Baron Corbin, the Olive Garden manager. He was greeted by Booze, of course. And Kurt Angle comes out, and he kind of gives a truce, and they shake hands. And then Kurt Angle ends up angle slamming him, puts him in the ankle lock. And we're like, okay, Kurt Angle got what he deserved. He put him in the ankle lock. It made up for last night. And then here comes Lars Sullivan. Lars. Lars destroyed everyone on Raw. I don't think anyone expected to see him. I think we kind of wrote him off a little bit because we hadn't heard from him. But he came down out of that ring. He did what he had to do. And again, Kurt Angle put over someone else while retiring. I feel like that's so selfless. (laughs) So selfless. It is. Well, there were some other good moments such as Alexa came back to defeat Bailey in a match that she hasn't fought for a while. Right. She's been injured. She's been injured. So she's been mainly doing announcing, like announcing WrestleMania the night before. But she wasn't the only return. Sami Zayn. Oh, my God. He's back. I did not like how they did Sami Zayn's return. When you have someone that has been out as long as he was, he was out for 10 months. Mm-hmm. He had shoulder surgery, two rotator cuffs. Okay. This is a long amount of time for him to be out. And they show him backstage walking to the ring. That's how they did his return. They did him so dirty. I know. He lost, which once Finn Balor came out, and then once they said it was for the Intercontinental Championship, I knew he wasn't winning because that would be too much like right. That's true. But we definitely didn't expect him to 
get on the mic afterwards and completely shit on the fans. Yeah, he called WWE a toxic environment. He called out the whole crowd. He didn't seem happy to be back at all. Sammy <laughs> is an impeccable hill. I'm glad that he was able to, you know, throw some shade and come back in that night. I agree. We have Becky two titles come to the ring. Everyone was so excited. And she's talking about Ronda. She's talking about Charlotte. Then she's leaving. Then we get Lacey Evans. She's coming out with her America's Next Top Model walk, (laughs) as she does on every show. We're thinking, okay, nothing's going to happen. She's going to walk out here, mind her business, and leave. She ends up giving Becky Lynch the women's right. And we're just like, what? Like, we didn't see that coming. She's been walking around for months, and now she's punching the women's champion? She's been planning i think she's, she's just been plotting. walking out there yeah. reminding people that she is still in wwe just walks in walks out but tonight she was like wow this is my time i'm gonna make it known that and she I won want heels she did and then the way she like wiped her lipstick after i'm excited to see where this feud is gonna go i'm excited for it too and then dean's last Dean. man- Bobby Lashley definitely hit Dean Ambrose where it hurts, and this is what he has to say. Don't worry, Dean. When you're gone, I'll make sure to take care of your wife for you. He really disrespected Dean and Renee, and of course Renee has some attitude. I would Did have you attitude see too. Renee's face. She was like, keep her name out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, she was so upset. I would be too. I was very disappointed with how this match ended. Because it ended with Dean Ambrose on the announce table, Renee over him, checking on him. A lot of people didn't see this unless, you know, you're on social media. But after the show ended, Seth Rollins came back out and they had a sending off moment for Dean Ambrose. They invited Roman Reigns out, so it was the whole shield. And it was sad. We're going to get into it a little bit later about, is this whole Dean thing a work or is he actually leaving? Dean has been such a great superstar in the last couple years. And once he came back from injury, I just felt like they didn't utilize him well and he just wasn't happy. We'll talk about that later, though. Yeah, I wonder what's next for him. And then we had SmackDown Live the next day. So Kofi has had a busy past three days. It was his homecoming. He was on WrestleMania, Raw the night before, and now SmackDown. There excitement and their congratulations from the new day was interrupted by the bar and drew mcintyre yes so the bar came out first and they were calling kofi a b-plus player and i need them to stop with that he has proven himself and then drew mcintyre came in and it turned into a match which kofi still came out on top that was actually the match that big e tore his meniscus in he's out for a couple months now which is pretty disappointing and of course you know still during this time we're nervous that big e's gonna have his heel turn but unfortunately that's gonna have to wait if it ever happens we had a title change on smackdown live the usos who had retained their tag team championships the night before faced off against the hardy boys and the hardy boys won amazing moment interrupted by lars sullivan Of course. And he came out like the night before and destroyed everyone. He attacked the Hardy Boys. But before the match even started, they had an interview with the Usos. And the Usos said, this match is going to show who the better brothers in WWE are. Ooh. I know. Turn against them. And then we also had another Becky Lynch and Lacey Evans interaction. Pretty much the same thing happened. Yeah, pretty much the same thing happened. I find it so interesting that these superstars from Raw and SmackDown are kind of intertwining their ways together and being on each other's shows. I mean, I mean, Becky could go anywhere. You're she right. Can go Becky back could, and forth. Yep. It doesn't matter what happens in the shakeup. She can be on Raw. She can be on SmackDown. So the Iconics came out and retain their titles against the Brooklyn Bells. The Brooklyn Bells are a tag team based in Brooklyn. They retained their title. They were still so excited. But do you think that since they brought out a tag team not from WWE, they're a little bit nervous. They want to keep their title for as long as possible. So they're going to do, you know, maybe these easier matches. (gasps) I absolutely don't think that. They wanted to show that they're capable of beating anyone. It doesn't matter if they're on the roster or not. They showed the night before that they're capable of beating even the people on the roster. So I think they're just giving the locals a chance. And the locals should be appreciative that the Iconics gave them their time. Mm, Okay, that's a good point there. So after the match was over, Paige was there and revealed that she's going to bring out a tag team of her own. Who do you think that's going to be? I have a couple thoughts. Yeah. They could incorporate an NXT team. 
I also think that they could reunite Absolution. The tag team was so successful while it was together, and then Paige got injured and ultimately retired, that it ended up just being Mandy and Sonya. Who do you think it would be? Well, I was also guessing someone from NXT. I don't think anyone on Raw or SmackDown would be as big of a surprise that Paige is making it seem. Right. So, I mean, we'll see who she brings out. Then we had 205 Live this week. We had a Cruiserweight Championship rematch from WrestleMania. Tony Nese, he defeated Buddy Murphy, and he retained his title. This was a wild match. They ended up behind the announce desk yes. like three times. I'm, I'm looking at this picture right now. Buddy Murphy is m- mid-air. There was also another match that night, and then they announced that next week it would be Cedric Alexander versus Oni Lorcan. So we should see how that match is. Yeah, so Cedric came in there and knew what he wanted and made sure that he got it. He pulled a Batista. Give me what I want! NXT kicked off Wednesday night with Candice LeRae versus Aaliyah. Candice LeRae is Gargano's wife. And so I know a lot of people were excited that she got her own match. Maybe she's stepping out of his shadow a little bit. They were happy about this being the kickoff match for NXT. I agree. Candice LeRae is such an incredible superstar that has done amazing things before WWE. I feel like she got an NXT and immediately they stuck her with her husband. And ever since then, she's been hidden behind them. Let her shine. Let that woman shine. She knows how to work that ring and she can wrestle the men too. So Gargano is also such a strong competitor. Absolutely. Like his wife. During NXT TakeOver in Brooklyn on Friday night, Gargano went against Adam Cole at a two out of three falls. This takes perseverance. A lot of competitors, they'll just have one pinfall and then they're excited like the match is over. But two out of three. Crazy match. Crazy match. It was a long match. It was, but it definitely wasn't as long as WrestleMania. (laughs) Good point. I'm glad to see Johnny Gargano with a championship belt around his waist. And he doesn't have to worry about Tommaso Ciampa coming after him or attacking him. They're on the same page for now. Now Candice can go out on her own. And finally show her true colors. I hope that she goes and she wins that women's championship. Let's see a couple hold the championships for once. Yeah, so after Gargano's match, she ran out and gave him a hug. It was a really touchy moment. And then Tommaso came out. No one was expecting that. He had neck surgery a couple months ago. He gave up the title for that surgery. And it was a nice moment. I'm glad that he didn't attack Gargano because that's usually the pattern that happens. But it was a great match. Let's talk about this superstar shakeup. Do you have any predictions on maybe some talent that could be coming up from the NXT roster that you would like to see on the main roster or any superstars that are on Raw that might go to SmackDown or vice versa? I can see Drew McIntyre going to SmackDown. Really? I can. He's really been waiting for his opportunity. And, you know, since Brock Lesnar is... He's gone. He's He's in Vegas. He flew out. I really think that this is McIntyre's time to step up. Drew McIntyre hasn't been on SmackDown in a very long time. That is where he started at. I hope that he goes there, and I hope that he wins a championship belt to show that he is back, and he's ready to go to the top. The last time he was on SmackDown, he was known as Vince McMahon's chosen one, and now he is the Scottish psychopath. (laughs) So it's... It's the right opportunity for him to just jump over there and jump into a main event spot. So, Lo, what are your predictions for the shakeup? I hope that they don't bring up NXT superstars that they cannot utilize. We have so many NXT superstars on the main roster right now that are just kind of sitting there. They're in catering. They're waiting for their moment. And that talent is not being utilized the way it should be. My other predictions... I'm actually just open to anything. I want to see what the WWE has in mind and how they're going to use these superstars when they, you know, jump to another brand. I've also heard rumors of a brand unification, ending the brands. But now that we see that they're doing the superstar shakeup, I don't think that they're going to do that anytime soon. But hey, it's the WWE. You never know. I'm excited to see new storylines. Yeah, me too. Especially after WrestleMania, you have chapters closed, Mm -hmm. careers have ended. Now what's next for people? Yes. Speaking of careers ending, as I mentioned earlier, Dean Ambrose is, quote unquote, leaving the WWE. This was announced months ago that Dean Ambrose would not be renewing his contract. It would be ending after WrestleMania. He was done with WWE. 
and people were shocked. They could not believe that a former Intercontinental Champion, a former Tag Champion, and a former WWE Champion was just ready to go, just ready to jump the ship. Over the past couple months, we've been seeing stuff on WWE, their Twitter, the stuff they say on air, and it's been a little bit weird. It has, because they usually don't announce. Reveal, exactly. Yeah. They put out a statement saying that John Good, that's his real name, will not be renewing his contract. And everyone was really thrown off because you never see a press release saying that someone's leaving three months from now. You see, we wish you the best in your future endeavors once they got fired or they decided to not renew their contract. So now Dean's contract is up. We saw him compete in his quote unquote final match on Raw against Bobby Lashley and... The fans are trying to figure out if he's been written off all the way. Where is he going? I've heard rumors of him going to AEW. I've heard him just kind of not even wrestling anymore. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm excited to see his next step. I'm excited to see maybe if he does stay in WWE, maybe he goes through like a character transition. A lot of people have said online that he wasn't really happy with his character. He wants more creative control. And we've heard that in the past with so many other superstars who are just sick and tired of sitting there and not being happy with their character that they're portraying on TV. This also relates back to how you said that it wouldn't be their best decision to bring up people from NXT. The roster is full and stuff like this is going to happen, such as how Sasha Banks reportedly wants to leave WWE. This story broke a couple days ago, and I've been shocked reading all of the comments that people are making. So did you see that they said she was mad about her title change at WrestleMania? Her and Bayley losing the championships to Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, according to the websites they say that Sasha was not expecting to lose her title when she did and she was very mad yeah they said that the day of is when she found out that she was going to lose her title belts Wrestlemania is a show where anything could happen plans get changed really fast it even happens on Raw people lose their titles and they don't even find out until you know right right before so you know that's the WWE I understand why she was disappointed. It's WrestleMania. You go out there to defend your title. Of course, you want to win. These rumors online are going crazy. They're saying she wants to go to AEW. She's done with WWE. I saw something online earlier. Take what you want with this. She unfollowed WWE. She followed AEW. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's being shady or what, but Sasha Banks has really stood out in the WWE especially as an African-American woman. You know, we don't have a lot of African-American women on the roster, and she's been able to win championships throughout her whole WWE career in NXT and on the main roster and singles action and tag team action. If she does decide to leave WWE, this is a huge loss for them. Yeah, she is one of the best female wrestlers out there. Right, four horse women. We'll have to see what happens, how this plays out, but... It wouldn't be in the best interest of WWE to lose her. I agree. I think of the revival when we talk about this. The same thing happened to them a couple months ago where they were just so sick and tired of their spot on the roster and they were threatening to leave. Then a couple weeks later, we see them win the tag championships and then they compete in WrestleMania. So I feel like the WWE kind of gave them that moment as, okay, don't leave. We're going to give you this. And I think Sasha's doing the same thing. I think she's seen how the Revival got what they really wanted, and now she's going to try and do the same thing. With as much talent as she has, I don't blame her. She should be being utilized. She should be on Raw. She should be doing more, and she knows I think all the women should be. I agree. I also think that with AEW just being released, just coming up, it seems like a good place for a lot of these wrestlers who maybe don't have, like, their best ideal situation on WWE, they seem like it could be a place for them to go. It is interesting that every time someone is mad about their spot in the WWE or they're not satisfied and it hits the rumors online, it's always so-and-so is dissatisfied with WWE. They're going to AEW. Mm-hmm. You, how do you know that? Where is your source from? How Did you talk to them? That's what kind of gets irritating to me because – AEW is still recruiting people, so a lot of the fans online, when they read this stuff and they see that their favorite superstar is going to AEW, they're going to believe it because they don't see them on TV every week, and they would want to see their favorite superstars more, and AEW seems promising since it is a new establishment, 
and their pay-per-views coming up in May. But you also have to think about with these contracts that the superstars are signed to, if they were to leave right now, they would have probably like a 30 to 60 day clause where they can't compete. So they definitely wouldn't be able to compete in Vegas for double or nothing right here in our hometown. But that's something to keep in the back of your mind. Yeah, we'll see how the shakeup changes everything. We'll see Agreed. where everyone goes. Some other news, Nia Jax is going to be out for the foreseeable future. Um, the Unstoppable Force has two torn ACLs. She announced it Friday on Twitter. I hope she comes back soon. This is an extremely crazy injury. One ACL is a lot, but both. Mm-hmm. So I wish her the best. Brian Road Dog James was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame last Friday with DX. And now he stepped down from his position as head writer of SmackDown, according to PW Insider. They said that he is growing frustrated with the late script changes by Vince McMahon. And this, he's at his breaking point. But he is not leaving the company. They're saying that he's going to be reassigned to a new role, maybe as like a road agent or even a color commentator. So I'm looking forward to see what he does next. This is definitely not the only WWE writer that we've heard about this week that has been in a difficult situation, right? Yeah, so during the Hall of Fame, it's a well-known fact that you're not supposed to say Vince McMahon's name during your speeches, yet Bret Hart mentioned Vince McMahon, and therefore the writer who helped him actually got fired for this. What? Yes, he got fired for mentioning Vince McMahon. Well, I find it interesting because D-Generation X's speech, they mentioned Vince McMahon numerous times. It was like a bit almost. Yeah, like, it was like a poking fun at the fact that you can't say his name for But much. at the same time, you have to think Triple H is married to Stephanie McMahon, and Stephanie McMahon's father is Vince McMahon. So Triple H might be able to do that, but Bret Hart, no. It is weird that the guy got fired. Everyone's getting fired. They're getting fined. Can someone just please be stable? Please. <laughs> Please do what's right. This was a crazy week. Everyone's tired. I've never watched wrestling so much in my life. So but much it, happened. Yes, so much happened, but it's been a great week. We've seen title changes. We've seen returns. We've seen farewells. But I'm ready for a nap. And I'm, you know what? I'm ready for a glass of wine, and then I'm ready for a nap. Girl, me too. But in the meantime, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and anywhere else that you listen to your podcasts. We upload new episodes every Saturday. Until next time, enjoy your wine and, of course, enjoy your wrestling. Cheers! Cheers.